I've been saying it for years. Let's blow up the moon. It will solve all of our problems. What problems, you ask? Well, how about the end of heat waves, snowstorms, hurricanes, and nearly every other catastrophic weather condition? In fact, it would mean the end of the Earth wobbling on its axis, which would eliminate the seasons, thanks to all parts of the Earth now receiving equal sunlight. This hypothesis is backed by science! Well, by a scientist. Dr. Alexander Abian was a mathematics professor who taught at Iowa State University for over 25 years and may have been the world's first unironic shit poster. Abian was a regular on Usenet, which, uh... Oh god, how do I describe this to a modern internet audience? Um, Usenet was like IRC, except nope, 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 no one's gonna know what IRC is. Um... Okay, so Usenet was essentially if you turned AOL chat rooms into bulletin board systems. And it, nope. No one knows what AOL does. No one, no, one, no one even knows what a chat room is. Usenet was like if Discord servers worked like emails rather than chat rooms. What am I saying? It's 2022. No one uses email. Usenet was like if Fortnite had text chat. Okay, tired, dragged out jokes aside, Usenet was a messaging protocol used in the 1980s and 90s where you would essentially put up posts to specific groups, like science, sports, video games, etc., for anyone to download and read. Think of it like Reddit and subreddits, except it was entirely text-based. Abian made a name for himself posting his radical philosophies on how to solve the Earth's problems, the most notorious of which being that we should blow up the moon to solve the climate crisis forever. And he meant each and every single single word of that, because he would also preach these same ideas to students who wanted to listen at the Iowa State University campus. Now I know what you're thinking, and yes, it's true. Dr. Abian was living proof that each and every shit post you read on the internet is posted with full sincerity. The next time you're browsing the dedicated meme channel of your favorite Discord server, aka the place where people repost jokes that you've already seen eight times before, but for some reason you just can't stop scrolling even though it brings you absolutely no happiness or satisfaction, you'll know that one guy who keeps posting extremely specific fascinations with My Little Pony full diaper tickle torture is entirely genuine. Dr. Alexander Abian's plan was simple. Use a nuclear bomb to destroy the moon entirely, resetting the tilt of the Earth's axis and solving all of our problems once and for all. So, why haven't we blown up the moon yet? Well, NASA, you know, the official National Aeronautics and Space Administration, has provided a relatively complex, intricate counter-argument to this idea. Now, hopefully I have enough time in this video to explain it. It's a little long. It's just pages and pages and pages of, like, physics calculations and 3D models, scales, replicas, tons of little experiments that they did to prove this. But I think I can summarize it. It's, oh, and the logistical nightmare. I forgot about that. They note all the, like, monetary costs of all this. It's a lot of numbers, a lot of reading, but I think I can summarize it up uh, sufficiently. Blowing up the moon would kill absolutely everyone and everything on Earth. Destroying the moon through a science fictional sense, aka a giant fucking super bomb capable of obliterating the entire thing in one go, wouldn't cause the moon to just poof out of existence. Those pieces would propel forward at mock speeds like my asshole in the bathroom after Chipotle. And more than likely, tons of them would hurtle towards the Earth. You know the thing called, uh, gravity? It helps pull us towards the Earth and pulls other things towards the Earth. You know, that force that both keeps all of us alive and Hirohiko Araki overuses it as a plot device in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Well, it turns out that the gravity pulling all those pieces of moon chunks towards the Earth would heat the Earth's atmosphere to the point that it would wipe out all life on the planet. And that's not even considering if there were some larger pieces of the moon that decided to plot a nice perfect course towards the Earth and smash directly into our atmosphere. They'd play the coolest game of billiards the universe has ever known with the Earth as the eight ball. Beyond that, if the moon were to simply disappear from the sky, the Earth's axis tilt would dramatically increase, leading to even more drastic seasons and even worse extreme weather events. 
aka the entire opposite of Operation Fuck the Moon's intended purpose. Our moon actually acts as a stabilizer as it sits in orbit. You remember that scene in Matilda where the girl gets hammer thrown by her fucking pigtails? Well, as soon as you let that screaming nine-year-old go sailing through the air, you're gonna feel some kickback force as you try to stabilize yourself from your gold medal winning child toss. That force for the Earth means a total fucking of the axis, and even more fried eggs on your summer sidewalk. And lastly, we really just can't blow up the moon. We don't have the current explosion yield to even do such a thing. It would take about 600 billion of our largest atomic bombs ever built to do it. Dr. Abian initially proposed that you first drill into the moon's core and then place the explosives there to blow it up. The problem is, because of the moon's natural gravitational force and our pussy-ass nuclear weapons, the gravity would most likely cause the large chunks of the moon to just rebind together and form a new moon. Sure, it'd be funny to have a moon with a giant butt crack so the moon can finally moon us back, but it's a waste of time. <laughs> but it's a waste of time, moon, but... <laughs> and even then, if we decided as a world, as a human race, to finally tell the moon to go fuck itself and fired everything we had at it, the best our current explosive weapon payload could do is crack the surface. And that's not good enough since I already made my butt crack joke. It's not that we don't want the moon to blow up, Dr. Abian, I mean it. It's just that we can't. Oh well, maybe next year. Now I want to reiterate. Dr. Abian is not some crackpot nobody shitposting on the proto-internet. He published three books and over 200 scientific papers in his lifetime, most of them in the field of mathematics, where, according from what I could find, he was very knowledgeable and no-nonsense. According to some student comments I could find, he was a very passionate, helpful teacher who had a real drive in making sure that his students understood what he was teaching, and he had a competent grasp on mathematics. But for some reason, he also had a chip on his shoulder when it came to us dumb assholes who think blowing up the moon is a bad idea. One of his papers was entitled Alter Earth's Orbit and Tilt. Stop Global Disasters and Epidemics. Alter the Solar System. Reorbit Venus into a near-Earth-like orbit to create a born-again Earth. Okay, maybe I should start to doubt this guy. Then again, that would just make me the dumbass, as mentioned earlier. Because as quoted by Dr. Abian, I am raising the petulant finger of defiance to the solar organization for the first time in five billion years. Those critics who say dismiss Abian's ideas are very close to those who dismissed Galileo. He also stated in defense of his interstellar ideas that the current alignment of planets is perverse, peevish, and criminal. Fair point, Dr. Abian because everyone knows we, as humans, align the planets like this on purpose. Let's talk about another one of your ideas. Dr. Abian was interviewed on a talk show called Ordinary Iowa around 1996, from my best guessing. It also seems like a show that was filmed on the Iowa State University campus by ISU students. It's not important. What is important is part one of this interview hits him with questions regarding his galactic gigabrain ideas on the universe, while part two includes a tour of his house showing off the Diet Coke in his fridge and the ping pong table used as a regular table in his basement. During part one, Dr. Abian discussed his new theory for the creation of the universe to rival the Big Bang. The Big Suck. Don't you giggle just yet, even though it's very funny. Because on the title, Dr. Abian said, if you find sexual connotation in Big Suck, you'll find the same thing in Big Bang. And he's absolutely right. <laughs> big suck and big bang. <laughs> the way he describes the big suck is, <laughs> is this. In the beginning, there was a big primeval altogether mass. Now, so far, that parallels the ideas of the Big Bang Theory, a phrase which has forever been ruined for me thanks to CBS. And as that mass came into contact with the vacuum of space, it was assimilated into the void. You know, that's what space tends to do. A vacuum. The current universe, as well as the explanation behind the expanding universe, is that this mass is still being displaced and stretched out by the vacuum of space. A helpful analogy to remember this theory is to picture your parents having sex. A big hulking mass, your father, plowed into the void, your mother. And the difference here is rather than having to choose between a big bang or a big suck, you get to have both. When asked to elaborate on this theory, such as how it conflicts with Einstein's theory of relativity and other scientific physical constants, Dr. Abian babbled about time and how, like, cosmic mass is being expended in his theory to make the energy that expands the universe, which is used as time, so the energy is consumed, but in, in time. And I'll be honest with you, I, I stopped following. 
it's at this point where I kind of just stop even like playing with these theories because Dr. Avian just defends them with rants and big grandiose statements that really don't mean anything. He, he doesn't really defend his points or elaborate on them as much as he says, well, you can't prove that I'm wrong. Okay. Now, let me tell you a little thing called Google Groups. Google Groups used to just be called Groups, and it was owned by Google. It was a bulletin board style posting grounds very similar to Usenet, just more modern. As an example, I went on there to try to search JoJo's Bizarre Adventure to see what discussions were going on. And I found this. Lesbian sex in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It even talked about my favorite part of JoJo's. Love sucking cocks in Secret Club. My secret Luffy. Volume 1, Chapter 3, Act 4. Why is this important? Well, first off, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is the historical chronicling of Dio's rise to power and subsequent defeat by Jonathan Joestar, and the after-effects of the climactic battle. But more relatively, Google Groups came into being when Google acquired Deja's Usenet Archive. And what was in that Usenet Archive, you ask? Some of Dr. Abian's original posts on his Big Suck Theory, including a group of other posters roasting the shit out of him for his insane ideas. Oh, yeah. Link in the description. It's a lengthy read, far too in-depth for a Wikipedia content-stealing whore like me to cover, but here's a fun quote from it. Dear Dr. Abian, I believe in the Big Bang. And I admit, you do not know where the primeval atom came from, or how it was created. However, although I do not know how it was created, I know where it came from. Someone put it into a Kmart shopping cart, but while taking the cart through the wormhole, they collided with a Vitron node, which looked like a Long John Silver's hush puppy. And the atom, which looked like a used wad of watermelon bubblicious, became sentient, and then exploded. And that's all I got. Initially, this video was going to be short, quick little nugget that I found online, thought was fun and interesting. Kind of want to just get it done so I can get back to Elden Ring. But then I found that interview on the talk show, and then I found the Google Usenet archive, and it just kept ballooning into whatever the fuck you want to call this now. It's, it's a fun little thing. Join me next week when I talk about how we should fuck the sun, or why I think it's time we finally filled in the Grand Canyon.